was looking at my father-in-law's the other day. His for half a million was I think one one twenty three, and then we looked at changing it to a million, and it was only like one seventy two. So why so wouldn't for that? You? That's exactly for that yeah. little of a difference for half a million more dollars yeah. of coverage. It's it's a no brainer. Yeah. everybody and welcome to another episode of the honest agent right here at business bridge media my name is adam robison owner and founder of the bridge and i am so excited that you've decided to join us for another episode i'm excited that our honest agent nate mcintyre is in the studio with us this morning and he has brought some visitors behind the camera that are having a great time playing with their toys and doing good stuff and we're going to stay on this side of the camera and tell you all that you need to know about homeowners insurance. Now, if you haven't yet done so, go ahead and mash that subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, share the episode, and if you really want to hear all the episodes that are released here at the bridge and you want to be notified, click that little bell up top too so that you get a notification on your phone that tells you exactly when an episode hits YouTube and you can learn more about The Honest Agent and all of the other podcasts that we feature right here at Business Bridge Media. So, Nathan, welcome to the studio, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm glad to be back in here. Man, I'm glad you're back in here too. And, uh, you know, sometimes things don't work on the first try. So, <laughs> So uh, for the for those of you that need to know how silly I can be sometimes, I was so excited to talk to the honest agent this morning that we've already filmed this episode. Or at least I thought we did. Uh, I was so excited to talk to Nate. We never actually hit the record button, so we're doing it all again. And I think it's going to be polished. It's going to be yeah. awesome. And Nathan is is patient enough to sit with me and say, "Yeah, we can do that again." <laughs> uh, and if he's patient enough to sit with me and all of my mishaps, he's patient enough to sit with you and yours too. So uh, we're just going to turn that into a positive customer service uh, uh, pitch there. It's a good transition. Nathan, <laughs> I think so. I was working pretty hard for that. Nathan, uh, last time we got together, it's been a few weeks or so now, but we talked about homeowners insurance. We talked about um, everything that we need to know, uh, replacement costs versus uh, actual value and uh, and all that other good stuff. I'm not going to pretend I know what they all are, <laughs> but I did pick up some new words and I'm developing a new understanding for them. So before we go into uh, our topic today, which is really setting up, uh, looking at the anatomy of a farmer's homeowner's insurance policy and how you set it up, and I'm going to try to ask questions, but I got to tell you, the first time we talked about it this morning, there's a lot of information. Yeah, so prepare for a lot of information. Go ahead, pull your your policy out. Press pause right now. Go get your paperwork. We're not trying to steal anybody's customers, but we do want to have an informed conversation about what homeowners insurance is to make sure that people are covered yeah. and, and all of that good stuff. So before we go into the anatomy of a homeowner's policy, why don't you take our listeners on a little bit of a review of some of the things that we talked about last week in relation to their homeowner's policy. Yeah. So uh, last week's episode was, was more so on the importance of the dwelling coverage your liability coverage in my opinion are your most your two most important ones on top of also replacement cost um, and then we transitioned a little bit into some claims and kind of how those are handled in in certain scenarios um, and so this week we'll just go through a specific home um, a farmer's home and uh, and just kind of what some of the options and stuff will be and and kind of see what applies because I customize all of them and I want to also just say but before everything Every agent's going to have their own opinion, um, and it's not necessarily wrong, and it's not necessarily right. It's 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 just kind of either how they were trained, or based on the experiences that they've had, claim wise or coverage wise, with any customers or friends of theirs um, in the past. And so, this is my opinion. Okay, sounds good. Now, just from the top, you've created a question for me because I um, I've never had my agent customize a policy for me or maybe they did and I just didn't know but it, it it always seems like when I shop or have shopped in the past for homeowners insurance um getting ready to give my business to the honest agent um but in the past I, I it's always felt very cookie cutter to me like you just sort of get this policy I didn't get any questions that were specific to me yeah. uh, or to outline my needs so um 
just go into a little piece as to why that customization process is important. Well, the customization is important because if you have, you know, $150,000 of separate structure coverage and all you have is a $5,000 shed in the back for your mower and some pool toys, you don't need that much. <laughs> you're paying right. you're paying for something you physically can't use even if you tried. Yeah. Um cuz there's there's nothing back there to to pay out on. That's right. Um uh, also, for the cookie cutter ones, we'll pre fill in with a liability of three hundred grand. Well, if you have a pool, if you have a trampoline, if you have kids, if you walk just ever, three hundred grand is not going to be enough if you're ever at fault for anything. Whether someone, I think we talked even last week, someone hops a fence and drowns in your pool, your fault. Yeah. Your dog bites somebody, your fault. Your a, a very close friend of one of your kids breaks their arm on the trampoline, still your fault. Hmm. And so the. Um, the liability is, you know, very important. So I'll, I'll never put it at three hundred grand, at least not on my my first try. I got you. Um, and then from there, the, it's you need it customized because you don't want to pay for what you can't use, and you um you just need to know what you have. Yeah. Yeah. Just, okay. Just plain, so you know how to how to use it when it comes time. Good deal. So uh, if you haven't had anybody talk you through a customization process for your homeowner's policy. Maybe it's time to have that conversation, right? So I didn't mean to interrupt you before you even got started, but I just thought right there, yep. man, that's never happened with me. So uh, go ahead, tell us about the structure of a farmer's homeowner's policy. Yeah. So um, in farmers, we've got the starting with the deductible. We can do fifteen hundred, twenty five hundred, five grand, ten grand. And then we go into the percentages of 1%, 1 1.5, or 2%. Um, with this, like a 1% deductible on a house that's covered for 300 grand would be $3,000. Okay. So that kind of meets in the middle if someone is okay with the $2,500 deductible, but not okay with a five grand deductible. And so that uh, kind of helps them meet in the middle and, yeah. and save money where, where they see well, it's, it's kind necessary. of a big deal what mm -hmm. those deductibles are set at, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, from there, we've got our, obviously, our dwelling coverage. Um, We've got uh, essentially that's that's like I said in the past that's just the coverage on the home mm -hmm. for the structure itself and everything that you live in. Um, in addition to that, it's coverage B on some other policies, but separate structures is also on there. Um, the lowest we can do is five percent, but separate structures is considered anything that's not attached by the roof line. Mm. So you can have a gazebo, you can have a walkway out to a shop, you can have stuff like that as long as those roofs don't connect and it's not the same shingle pattern mm -hmm. or anything. Um, then it's it's considered a separate structure. See, that's more new learning for me. I have two separate structures that aren't connected by the roof. I just assume they were covered in my policy. Mm -hmm. Are are they usually, or do you have to typically the, take a, an additional yeah. floater out for that? Well, in the in the farmers one, you will have a um, automatic amount of coverage on there, whether that's five okay. percent or ten, whatever that system pre fills mm -hmm. in. If they don't change it, but certain companies, and I even have a secondary market where I can take separate structures completely out. Okay, it just kind of varies per if company. Someone's looking to bring that cost down a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Okay, got it. You doing good? Yeah. Okay, just make it sure. Um, Should we introduce this guy yeah, since this he's going to be on the yeah, episode? Now that he's on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Cohen. This is my little boy. He is five years old. Can you say hi to the camera, Cohen? <laughs> All right. We thought he'd be too shy to be on the yeah, show with yeah, us, but he's come to enter the conversation. He's inching up a little longer. That's the way. all right. <laughs> um, this is going to have the most views of any of your episodes yeah, just should. because Cohen's yeah, in it. Yeah, it should. <laughs> um, so on top of that, we've got uh, our personal property amount. Um, lowest farmers can go is 40% of your dwelling value, mm -hmm. um, and you can make this as far as you want it to be. You, and like, like I mentioned on the one that wasn't recording, um, the uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, personal bro. property covers almost pretty much everything. It won't cover like a side-by-side -side because okay. that's a separate standalone thing. It right. needs to be separately insured, especially if you have a loan on it. You know, mm -hmm. that's not going to be covered in separate structures. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll cover mowers. It'll cover your... Um, your jewelry, your clothes, TV, stuff like that. Um, won't cover like a commercial mower, anything to, of commercial use. It's okay. a little bit different. That makes sense. Um, and then we have a replacement cost option and a cash value option for that as well. Um, I always try to recommend replacement costs just because it's it's pretty inexpensive to have that on there. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's just going to be able to pay out well or better if if it's ever used. And that's sure. more so if you have a laptop and it uh, you lose it in a fire that's five years old, you get a brand new one. That's good not deal. The, not the 
cash value of what that laptop is worth now, mm -hmm. just a brand new replacement. Yeah. So one of the things that, you know, in trying to prepare myself for this episode and these episodes, one of the things I keep reading is about is the difference between replacement cost and cash value. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we talked about mm -hmm. that in the last episode in a little bit, but just in a few words, can you go ahead and hit the difference in that? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a big difference. The, the actual cash value option, you get the whatever that item is worth now so if it's like if it is that laptop and you had a macbook pro that was bought in 2019 you know maybe it's only worth 400 dollars now mm -hmm. um, whereas replacement costs they're what 1200 at least know, 15 i don't even know how much yeah. they are right now i don't have one so yeah. i don't know <laughs> i don't either um, but that's that's can be a very big difference especially when you need it and you're kind of relying on it and you're going to want to rely on that when um insurance is time for them to come in definitely so, um, from there, we've got loss of use, um, and that's uh, all the way down to 10% of the dwelling value as well. This is food and hotel expense if you had to move out while your place is being fixed for any reason. Um, and then this is just a, an amount that just gets tacked on top of the claim, and it's just to help still you know keep you afloat keep you yeah. alive and keep you housed i remember when i was a young man i worked a uh, front desk for a hampton inn i was about 22 years old and uh there was a family of five that had to move in they didn't all fit into one room so they had to pay for two rooms mm -hmm. a night and they were there for like 44 nights mm -hmm. it was ridiculous and i remember then thinking boy this is gonna cost quite a bit but they probably yeah. had this covered by their insurance yep. and were able to do that without the sticker shock of staying mm -hmm. at a hotel for a month and a half. Yeah, yeah so, for sure. Yeah. So that's directly where that would come into play. Okay. Um, and we've got options whether you want it at 12 months or, or if you pay for the 24-month option on how long that coverage is available to mm -hmm. have. Um, and then it goes into the liability that I talked about. Um, a lot of systems will pre-fill into 300000 I make sure mine pre-fills into five hundred, mm. And then I even look at the, the million or $2 million option. Um, I was looking at my father-in-law's the other day. His, for half a million was I think one one twenty three, and then we looked at changing it to a million, and it was only like one seventy two. So why so wouldn't for that? You? That's exactly for that yeah. little of a difference for half a million more dollars yeah. of coverage. It's it's a no brainer. Yeah. So when we're shopping for our policies, we might want to difference. not only look at what we're eyeing, but maybe what that next level is mm -hmm. too, to see if there's a significant gap. There's, there, there's right? rating bands where if you jump up to the next band, it's cheaper. So that's a lot of that's in life Ooh. insurance as well. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about that later. Never but, heard of a rating band. Um, that's cool. It's, it's kind of the same concept there whether it's labeled that or not it's the same concept okay got it um we've also got guest medical this is anywhere from one thousand to five thousand dollars um very inexpensive to add and so i just i take it up to five grand every every single time it's like 50 bucks maybe for okay the year. your shoe coming off <laughs> um where's the insurance for that when yeah, you need no it kidding. right gosh and then uh, you can take them off if you want buddy okay go take them off set them over there um, and then we've got building ordinance. It's, uh, it helps keeps things up to code. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen it come into play a lot, uh, more so when an electrical box in your backyard is hit by lightning mm. and then it blows out the outlets inside your house. Yeah. It's, it's more so for stuff like that. Um, not going to be as big of a deal for um, newer homes, but older homes may have more of a, of a code issue. Gotcha. Um, and then we go into our replacement costs. Right now, farmer's replacement cost, um, this is for the dwelling, has a base of 125%. Um, so pretty much, and I'll, I'll kind of go slow on the math here, how I figure this up is if your house is, is worth $580,000, okay. that's your home, that's what it's covered for if it burns to the ground. Mm -hmm. You take that and you multiply that by 0.25 of your 125%. Mm -hmm. That equals one hundred and forty-five grand. In addition to what you already have to, wow. to your 580. Okay. Now, if you add those two together, that's a total of seven hundred and twenty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars for your actual home. Divide that by your square footage. Mm -hmm. Say it's thirty-six fifty-six is your square footage. That's one hundred and ninety-eight dollars a square foot to rebuild with. Wow. Okay. In Northwest Arkansas, I try to get it an average between one hundred and eighty and two hundred and twenty. Okay. And so that's what I'll do with all of them. Now, south of here, um, materials and labor is a little bit less, and so we'll I'll trim that down. Anything north of Springdale, um, I try to make sure it's above two hundred. Mm -hmm. um, but even at that, all of them are still at their different values. Mm -hmm. You could have you know really nice homes and wherever, mm -hmm. and they still need to be on that same algorithm. Sure. Um, so that's that's kind of what I try to do, and I've I've matched uh, matched that or 
talked about it with a couple builders and mm-hmm. they've you know agreed mm-hmm. everybody has their own opinion but they said yeah that's a so good does that start. go up or down based on the economy too and how much yeah. the cost of uh, materials and supplies yeah. are loosely um i mean that's that's what it's been for that's what i've had it at since i've started okay it's, it's how i was trained and um since i did it for so long i verified it a few months ago and mm-hmm. they said it was still pretty accurate very good there. um i'm not questioning you i've just never heard yeah. this this is great stuff yeah, so that's that's a big one there because your dwelling value is is the bulk of the cost, and so you can have a super cheap home policy, but just drop your dwelling way down mm. if they'll if it'll even get passed. Sure, um, but if you need it, you're going to be in a bad situation if, if you don't have enough. Sounds like it. Um, there's also uh, limited matching. Um, this is more so for siding or portions of your roof if they get blown off for whatever reason, um, and they it's it's so old maybe they can't find that same material to match mm-hmm. maybe that same texture that same color whatever it is so it's coverage for that uh, more so on more vinyl based homes or built homes and um, and older ones okay um, we've got uh, metal marring and I've got to hook up the internet again for this guy do you want to just put ours in that's okay okay it's it does that when you turn it off how do you feel being a big TV star now <laughs> All right, buddy, you're good. Go put your headphones in. Um, so we've got uh, metal marring. Um, this is for the metal parts of the roof that are not, they're not specifically covered on a normal roof replacement. Okay. The little whirly birds up there, the spouts. If you have copper, a lot of people have like copper covers mm-hmm. on like entryways and stuff. Um, those are not uh, like specifically covered on a roof replacement for hail damage. You need to have metal marring if you care about that s- kind of stuff. Now, the attachments on top aren't going to be that expensive. Mm-hmm. Not you typically not going to be that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Those copper awnings will be. And okay. So those are or those the copper flashing mm-hmm. sometimes are a big deal. Um, we've got access through foundations and walls help you drill through the foundation for a leak or if you need anything like that. Um, Again, something I put on some more older homes. Um, rear roof at replacement or scheduled payment, which is also actual cash value. We've talked about that. Um, the fencing, um, you can do replacement cost or actual cash value there. If it's an iron fence or anything worth a lot of money or very expensive or brand new, then replacement cost is fine. If it's a normal um, wood fence, mm-hmm. then actual cash value is probably going to be enough. Okay. Um, and, and even at that, it's not... It's not too expensive, even if you have replacement costs and you don't and you don't need it. It's not a big difference. We've also got uh, cyber and identity um, shield, and it's for obviously cyber security, social security number, identity stolen. It's coverage for that. That's and part that's of the in, homeowner's policy. It is if you want it. Okay, you can take that off, but you can also increase how much you want of it too. You can have more more coverage yeah. for that as well. I just think that's some that, that seems to be one of those services that's offered by every nickel and dime credit card mm-hmm. and whatnot. It would seem to me like you could trust someone like Farmers or some, uh, an entity like Farmers with that type of service mm-hmm. and not trust it to you know a, a little credit card that you yeah. have that's offering you identity protection. On yeah. all of your goods. Well, because so. even that credit card will probably just be that card alone, too. That's true. I, I didn't think about that. It branch off to other yeah. things. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, and then we've got our special limits. Um, these are more of the, the pre filled stuff in there that we cannot change. We can change how much it's all worth, whether it's the standard, enhanced, or premier package. Um, but those are like incremental gun coverage and um, personal property on a second home, whereas. It's it's literally stuff you can't change. I'm not going to go into all that because it's it's just kind of pointless. Sure, but um, that is a you can change the package that it's built out of to make it cheaper or more expensive if you need to, based on if it's obviously fit if it fits a situation. Um, and then we, I mean we went through some of the floaters um, last week. I'll touch on them just real fast. We have if you have uh, anything worth of like specific value such as jewelry, fine arts. Fur, musical instruments, cameras, silverware, or firearms. Um, you can get specific coverage on just those alone. You hmm. can cover your wife's wedding ring. Um, if you have uh, several guns, you can cover those all individually. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've got like farm and ranch liability. If you have a, a f- you're renting some land out and they have cows on it, you know. 10 miles down the road, something like that. Sure. Um, separate structures away from the home. If you have a shed on a, on a building that you or on a land plot that you're going to build, but you haven't done it yet, it covers that, that shed or that shop there. Nice. Um, 
It's just a bunch of real small floaters. The other, Basically, anything you've put an investment into, yeah. we can find some coverage yeah. for it, right? Yeah, because okay. that's – especially stuff like that, you don't want to rely on just the personal property amount alone. Right. If – you know, especially if you don't have the actual, if you have a repla- if you don't have replacement cost, and you just bought a brand new ten thousand dollar ring, you know, what if something happens in the gold market or jewelry mm. market right shortly after that, and it's not worth that anymore? Mm-hmm. On the jewelry floater, you can, you know, s- say specifically, I want ten thousand dollars back. I want this exact value back if I lose it, and you will get it. It's very, it's That's very quick so to do. Interesting. I, I had a ring claim the other day get paid out. I filed it on a Monday. It got paid out on Wednesday. Okay. It was and it wow. was through two phone calls and it was done very quickly. Wow. Um, and then other than that, and I'll let you ask uh, you know some questions, mm-hmm. but um, we have some optional coverage or additional coverages. Um, personal injury can be added for um, say if it's like a it's more of like a verbal thing. So if like teachers were out to eat at lunch and then one of them was talking bad about a student and that student's grandparents were in the booth beside them, that stuff kind of comes into on top of that. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's I haven't heard of it being used yet, but that's the story I keep hearing whenever I ask the district about it. So. Yeah. Well, and um, as an old high school principal, I'm thinking of social media mm-hmm. posts that you know, someone would say harmed them yeah. or something like that. Uh, it seemed to be a regular even back in 2007 when I was doing that. I can't imagine what it's like today, almost yeah. 20 years later. Uh, so that's interesting. I didn't realize that that was uh, insurable. Yeah, it's more of a of a verbal thing, not necessarily what it sounds like as far as you personally getting injured. I <laughs> it's, it's for someone else. But, yeah, okay. Um We've got obviously earthquake coverage. It's not going to be directly built in. It's going to be an option, but that is it is very easily an option in, in farmers. Um, we've got uh, emergency mortgage assistance, so it, it's uh, it covers the payment, the mortgage of the dwelling if it's if it's uh, you're unavailable to live in. Hmm. Um, water backup and sump overflow, limited plumbing system repair, where it repairs just like it's a thousand dollars to whatever piece of plumbing broke, whether it's a valve or something specific that mm-hmm. caused the water loss. It's another grand that goes towards that plumbing piece. Um, limited plumbing system repair, home share if you were um, sharing your home with sure. somebody temporarily or one room or whatever it is. Um, Child care liability if you have a daycare rent out of your home. Um, zero deductible glass. Big for lake houses or something sure. like that that have those glass walls or massive yeah. glass windows. Um, landscaping, wind and hail. So if you you know all your expensive trees and plants and stuff out front, if you're okay. a real big gardener, I didn't and know then, any of this stuff was covered. Mm-hmm. This is it's, really it's incredible. An option. These it's are all an option. You so to, you can get them covered. This is why you need to have it customized, is so you can. You yeah, know, be asked. You've you made your point. About, hey, is this you like? Because the agent should look up a picture of the house on at least Zillow and be like, "Man, this is there's some extensive landscaping out here. Is this something that you guys would be interested in?" Mm-hmm. No, we just bought the house and it's too much maintenance. I don't like it. Cool, we won't put it on there. Or, yes, mm-hmm. my wife does. She works in the garden every day. Or mm-hmm. I, I work in the garden every single day after work. I want it on there, um, and so that's coverage, especially for like freezes and stuff like that, where it can kill a Japanese maple that you just put out there. Yeah. Wow. Um, We've got limited leakage and seepage, which is like hidden leaks, um, not from an appliance, though. An appliance is more so um, wear and tear that they want you to be aware of. Mm-hmm. Like you're, it's, it's kind of just being negligent at that point. It's more of a maintenance thing, and so it's not going to cover stuff like that. And then the last two, that probably my favorite two, um, there's utility line, which is any lines of service underground. Okay. From the easement of the property all the way up to the home. Hmm. And so that's your gas, your sewer, your water, electrical, anything that's fiber underground. Fiber internet, anything? Huh? Like fiber internet, would that if it's yeah. running under the ground? Yeah, anything okay. underground. Um, and a lot of the more times that I filed this one is, is uh, when there's a lot of trees in the yard and it's pushed into a water line. And it's mm. either completely cracked it and there's a bunch of dirt and stuff coming back into the home um, or it's they're flush and it's leaking out the out into the yard somewhere. Oh, man. Or um, last one I filed was there was bubbles coming up in the toilets. Interesting. And, so, and, and it's because there was a tree root growing into that pipe. Roto-Rooter went out there to look at it and the estimate was $10,000 to <sighs> fix it. Utility line covers up to ten thousand dollars, and so that she paid no, she paid her deductible, and that was it on this one. Yeah, and that wow. happened like six months ago. I lived in a rent house once that uh, the the commode started acting up, and they said there were tree roots um, that had broke through the pipe, but were actually going into it. They mm-hmm. couldn't even get the scope up into the line anymore. Um, 
I was so thankful I was just renting. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, the landlord said it was a pretty hefty expense yeah. to get fixed. And so um, a lot of us while looking at the house helps if there's not a whole lot of trees out there. If you know, okay, this massive tree, no lines are over there. You verify with the homeowner. There's nothing going underground there. Cool. Let's not worry about that. Um, and for older homes when those pipes are, are weaker. Sure. Okay. Um, and then there's also equipment breakdown. This is for any sudden eruptions or implosions of pressure systems. So I have this on my home for um, because we have a pool, a hot tub, and um, the HVAC's old. Mm -hmm. And so it uh, it's not going to cover like wear and tear of an HVAC, um, but it will cover if it just all of a sudden blows up. That's or incredible. if something in one of my pool pumps happens or hot tub, something like that. Um, another thing you want to add on some older homes. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I could get that equipment added to my policy. Mm -hmm. I also have a home. Uh, I have a, an external hot tub that's not built in. Um, but that pool, there's so much when you, you're not you're having an issue with you know your water chemistry or whatnot. And our pool, ever since we bought the place, like it drops in level about an inch or two a day mm -hmm. and I can't get anybody to tell me what's wrong with it. I know it's faster than evaporation, mm -hmm. but, um, I didn't know that, that, uh, that would be something I could have included in my homeowner's policy yeah. too. Uh, just the, the, the pool and the contents underground and, and whatnot. Yeah. It's especially it's, it's more, it, it, they say every claim subject to investigation. Sure. And so they'd have to make sure that's not a maintenance thing mm -hmm. or if it's not just a, a pump slowly going out over time, yeah. but if it's something sudden and erupt that mm -hmm. just blows something up or it doesn't have to physically be a massive explosion. But um, if you look at the, the all the farmers' commercials that you see on TV were all real things that happened. Is that right? So the, the hot water heater that blew out of the top of the yeah. house and landed on the car, that that was a real story. Is <laughs> that actually happened, and that was all covered. I thought those were just uh, mm -mm. fictional tales, all mm -mm. of that them, really. Real because Farmers has what's called an um, an all-peril or an open-peril policy, uh -huh. not a named-peril policy. Named-peril, and you have to look at this on your on your certain uh, whatever policy you have. Named-peril, it's just list. It just covers what's listed in the, like the declaration page and all the fine uh -huh. print. It's not going to cover things that are outside of that. Okay. Um, an open peril, which is what Farmer says, covers any of those weird things. Wow. So stuff like that. Or there was a story, I think in Bella Vista, um, a deer came up in the backyard while the p homeowners were gone and saw its reflection in the slide glass door <laughs> yeah and to had a fight with itself and got through the house and just tore up everything trying to get oh out oh my left gosh again. and so they came home and their house has been just dismantled oh. and that was covered wow that's crazy yeah. so i'm curious nathan uh, i know before we talked about homeowners insurance we talked about full coverage auto insurance and what's included in all of that and how it can be different based on the policy but one of the things we discussed was uh the fact that rates are a little crazy yeah. right now because people are talking about the fact that we have people filing auto claims for things that probably shouldn't be filed on and it, it's taking a lot of money um the, the system is using a lot of money so they're having to generate more money mm -hmm. does that same phenomenon exist right now in homeowners yes. claims it's it's the same exact thing just with different reasons um all of the hail damage and the storms and the tornadoes that we had in springdale last couple years mm -hmm. directly affected the rates especially mm. with farmers customers because they're, they're not they don't care about other companies payouts they care about their own sure directly affected the farmers rates in that zip code hmm. in these areas well, uh, yes it's farmers it wasn't going to cover that school in springdale that got tore up by the tornado but it had a bunch of homes i'm sure that it had to pay out on in, in that path mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be a big thing that's going to change the rating per zip code per state um, arkansas is considered a high premium state anyway because of all the weather that we have and because of the wrecks that we have because of the weather with the driving um, and so the, it also goes hand in hand with the cost of construction, the cost of labor. Um, you know, the lumber increase not too long ago was was a big deal there, um, and it's it the inflation, the economy, all directly affects every aspect of insurance. Mm. Well, Nathan, we're just about out of time for today's episode, but I want to go ahead and close with you talking to our our listeners out there and, and really tell them uh, or remind them. Uh, why all of this is so important, right? I mean, uh, obviously you're building an insurance business and so it's mm -hmm. important to you not only to be able to support your family, but I know you have a personal interest in helping people and making sure that they're covered when their time comes. Um, 
why is it uh, that, that you're doing this? Why is it that you're working so hard to make sure that people are covered? Yeah. Well, the so the biggest thing about being an agent, you don't want those bad phone calls that, yes, you're going to get the ones about the bill and the rate increase and stuff like that. That's inevitable and it, it will happen. But you definitely don't want one coming back at you where they're not only mad at you, they're threatening to file uh, errors and emissions claim on you, threatening to go to the commission, the insurance commissioner, or the, the board, whatever it is, because all you wanted to do was make a sale and you underinsured them and you covered their half a million dollar house for one fifty, And now they have to they, they can't even buy a rent house now. Oh. Um, and so you you don't want that coming back. at yeah. you. And so to to help people properly, because uh, one of the biggest complaints i guess that you would get is man i i've and you said it you know I've, i pay this money and i don't i don't file a claim i've never i don't i don't use this why yeah. am i why am i paying for all this and when, when i'm not even going to use it well when you do when it's your time in line because you you know with your house as yeah. you're younger you well you um then you or your wife have a wreck the other day or back then uh uh no, but if she happened. did and didn't tell, I'm okay, kidding. No, um, I'm sure you've talked to so many yeah, people. I guess so, so. anyways, um, but it it's, you're, it will happen at some point in time. Mm -hmm. It's no, hopefully, it's not going to be you know your house burning down um, or a tornado. But at some point in time, you will have to use it for something. A, a, a good friend of mine hasn't filed any claims, but his his uh, dog bit somebody. They had to file. They had to file yeah. a liability claim there, and it. You know, they had three hundred thousand, and yeah. they convinced the guy to take that much. But he was trying to go for like a couple million at first, and then the claims kind of went back and forth. So that's a little outlandish for the actual damage that yeah. was done. But, um, but you you know you want to be able to to provide that good customer service and to help people when it comes time. If they're going to trust me, or if you're going to trust me with your business and you know handling your bank accounts, handling your family's future, handling your life policy for your kids, um, anything like that, then I'm going to make sure that I do the right thing that I can do to where that one doesn't come back on me. But that helps you because if it doesn't help you and you're in a bond, it's I'm not going to sleep well and. That's just bad karma across the board. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, I think we've put in another good episode. Cohen made it all the way through. Yeah. Uh, he didn't get upset. He didn't fall well, asleep. He's well, been hanging snacks, with us the entire good. time, and uh, he's done a good job. So uh, I, I think we've pretty much put this subject to bed. What do you yeah. think? Yeah. Home Homeowners is done. Yeah. All right. Well, on behalf of the honest agent with Farmers Insurance, we're going to put all of his contact information in the description of the show. So if you want to talk to Nathan or his team, you want to know more about how you can become a farmer's insurance customer or what farmers can do for you in relation to your current policy all that information is going to be in the description so make sure you reach out to nathan and his team he's got a good team man yeah. it's not just him he's got some great great people behind him and i know he'd like to introduce those people to you so on behalf of the honest agent his little boy cohen and my name hmm. is adam robison you've just taken another stroll on the bridge with the honest agent and we will both see you here next time. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you.